Hey, this is JR St. Julian with the St. Julian Real Estate Group of EXP Realty, and welcome to my San Diego housing market update for March 2023. There's a ton of stuff happening in the market right now. We got banks failing, we got the Fed raising interest rates, but maybe not as much as everybody thought they would, but still more than what most people wanted them to do. We have mortgage interest rates going up, mortgage interest rates coming down, and we got demand increasing and supply decreasing in the marketplace. So let's get into all those things and let's talk about how the macro economy is affecting the micro economy and the San Diego housing market. Let's get to it. So as you know, there's two major U.S. banks that failed in the last couple of weeks. A bank overseas in the, in Swiss that was acquired uh, just in the past week and another U.S. bank kind of on life support as we speak. Now, we're going to quickly talk about what's going on with these. So uh, all these banks had some similar things going on. One, they had a very large percentage of their deposits were above the FDIC insurable limit, which is 250000 per depositor per bank per account type, where the account types are like single joint retirement etc. They had kind of a, a specialized situation where most of the deposits were above and beyond those insured limits. When the bank got in trouble, where they realized they may not have enough funds to service the withdrawal requests that are coming through, and they decided to start selling off some of their bonds that they had acquired at lower interest rates, which now they had to sell for a loss because the interest rates are higher as a result of the Fed raising interest rates over the last year. That news got out to their depositors, which was a select group of businesses and business professionals. And the word spread like wildfire and a panic ensued. And in one single day, they had $42 billion in requests to withdraw funds. So of course that was unsustainable. And as a result, that bank failed. Similar thing happened to Signature Bank a few days later. And this one catered to real estate and law firms again had a significant large portion of its deposits above and beyond the FDIC limits. And again, as a result of the Signature Valley Bank failure, these folks recognized that, oh crap, we have money in this bank and it's well above the, the insured limit. So let's start withdrawing our money out. And they could not keep up with the withdrawals and they failed. And now we have the First Republic Bank, which is on life support. Its stock pretty much got pummeled in the last two weeks. And it's gone from $120 per share to around $15 per share. It also was a bank that had two thirds of its deposits that were above and beyond the FDIC insured limit. So now as a result of these other failures, it's on life support. Now, the uh, private sector, some big banks have come in, they have kind of pushed in $30 billion in cash to uh, try to shore up the bank, but it's still uncertain how that's gonna pan out. So how is this affecting the real estate market? Number one, it is raising the question in people's minds, hey, is my money safe in the bank? Well, most people don't have over $250,000 in the bank, but if you're worried about it, I would recommend you go to the FDIC website and check out their EDI, which is their, I forget what it stands for, but it's basically their insurance calculator to see how much of your funds are insured or uninsured. And that'll kind of tell you where you stand and then you can make a decision whether you want to move some of that money to another bank. That being said, the biggest effect that this is having on the housing market is that in response to this, we saw the expectation for what the Fed would do. I'm putting this video together on March 22nd. So we just had the Fed meet and release their results for their March meeting. And coming into this meeting, Prior to all this bank stuff, most people were expecting the Fed to raise the interest rates by a half of a percent. Well, after banks started failing and it kind of being led back to the fact that the Fed has raised their Fed's funds rates so quickly and so rapidly over the last year that now it's starting to have an effect and maybe the Fed may be more cautious about future rate hikes going forward. And that actually manifested itself today. Uh, some people thought that they would only do a quarter percent, which they did, and other people thought they wouldn't do any rate hike. They would kind of take a pause to kind of see how things worked out. They still decided to do the quarter percent interest rate hike, but they did say that they do expect us to see some uh, financial system tightening or banks getting more conservative on how they loan out money and issue credit. And therefore, they felt that they did not have to be re as restrictive with their rate hike because a financial tightening in the credit market or by the banks would have theoretically a similar effect. And they want to see how much tightening actually happens and how does that affect the inflation numbers, the unemployment numbers or employment numbers and kind of go from there. So they put out a couple different things today. So they said, you know, hey, we're raising it a quarter uh, basis point and we're not going to say that we're definitely going to raise again the next time we meet. Basically, we're going to wait to see what the data says and then we will respond accordingly. So that's been a change of tune. Now, as a result of that change of tune and how the market responded and the expectations that changed for how the Fed would behave after the bank failures, we saw mortgage interest rates come down about half a percent. So how is that affecting the housing market? Well, the bank failures reduced the interest rate hike expectations in the marketplace. Mortgage rates came down about half a percent and that is happening in a time of once again, 
where we still have slightly higher demand, at least in comparison to what we saw at the end of last year. Definitely lower inventory. We're sitting at one month of inventory right now, resulting in more competition if you're trying to buy a home, more bidders if you're trying to sell a home. And we're seeing that manifest itself. Now, one thing that has been happening in the last couple of months, we've seen interest rates go up, we've seen them come down, we've seen them go up. And it seems like as we kind of get up toward that 7% mark, that demand falls off a bit. As it comes back down to the 6% point, the demand goes back up again. So we may see a little bit of a pendulum back and forth in demand, but the biggest problem that we're having right now is supply. And the supply challenge that we're having is also a function of interest rates, uh, which goes back to the inflation conversation that we've been having for months. So as a result of the differential between the interest rate that the homeowner has on their current home and the interest rate on a home that they would have to move into, because most people that sell a home need to also buy a home and they're moving because they need to you know, downsize, size up, move to a different area, but typically a homeowner sells a home and then buys a home. So that's most of the people that put their home on the market are selling a home and buying a home. Well, as a result in the differential between the rate that they have on their current home and the associated payment with that rate and the rate that they would have to get on the next home and the much higher payment that would be associated with that rate, most sellers that would consider us selling their place are deciding to stay put. And really until the rates stabilize, we get to a number that's not kind of doing like this. I would say stabilized, maybe less than 6%. I would say we would continue to see inventory problems. And honestly, we had inventory problems well before we got into any of these issues. So that may be a problem forever going forward in the San Diego market, who knows? But definitely it's a problem right now. So outside of that, the primary thing that will determine how this affects the real estate market is how the Fed will now change its game plan to fight inflation with the understanding and recognition that there have been some bank failures as a result of them hiking rates so aggressively over the past year. All of the banks contributed a portion of the reason why they failed to that fact. And therefore, that will make the Fed more cautious. So that was the expectation. And as a result, we saw mortgage interest rates drop about a half a point. And today, the Fed concluded its monthly meeting. And instead of raising a half a point or 50 basis points, they increased the Fed funds rate by a quarter point or 25 basis points. So the Fed did get more conservative in their response. And then the Fed chairman's debriefing on the backside of the meeting said essentially that they no longer have an expectation that they will raise rates again. They basically will wait and see how the stats and the data responds to the environment and what they've done so far, and then execute the appropriate policy based on the data. So that has changed a little bit of what they're putting out on what they're going to do in response to inflation, because they expect these bank failures to cause some credit tightening by banks throughout the system. Basically, they're expecting banks to get more conservative about what type of loans they issue and who they issue them to. And as a result, that will have some of the uh, desired outcomes that a higher rate would have, because now they're reducing the credit and liquidity of the financial system, which should cause the economy to slow down a little bit. So that's what's being expected. Now, that being said, the Fed also did say that they do believe the banking system is safe. They did put a new measure in place. One thing they did is they, they insured all of the deposits for the two banks that failed. And then also they put in a, an emergency loan system to allow banks that are in need of funds, instead of having to sell securities or debt instruments that they purchase as investments at a loss before they mature, they can just go ahead and borrow the funds that they need to service their withdrawal requests. And that has actually been utilized where they have already uh, given out over $300 billion in the last couple of weeks via that system. And that seems to have worked. Now, how has that affected the housing market again? Well, to be honest, it hasn't outside of that small dip in the market rates. Like I said, we saw the uh, interest rates come down a half a percent. What's gonna happen as a result of this, is honestly, unless we start to see additional bank failures and it actually starts to have a more substantial impact into the system. I don't think it's gonna have a significant impact other than it may result in some credit market tightening and slowing of the economy, which hopefully will help with the inflation situation and prevent the Fed from having to raise interest rates in the future. So overall, it could be good for the housing market. We're gonna to have to wait and see on that. Now, things that are happening in the market right now, appreciation is 100% back in this market. In last month's report, I let you know that we're starting to see appreciation come back where we had appreciation in attached home space, but not in a detached home space. Well, we got appreciation in both spaces now. And we've seen uh, from January to February, we're up 1.7% in immediate home value. Competition is up, and that is the reason why. As I mentioned last time, we're starting to see more multiple offer situations. 
that's definitely manifested itself. Months of inventory dropped from 1.1 month in January to one month in February. And the active inventory for sale has decreased by 11.3%, while the closed listings have increased month to month by 13.5%. There's definitely more activity right now. Demand is increasing. And I think that's a combination of people getting more adjusted to the newer rates. The extreme low inventory that we're having right now is a function of that rate differential between what a theoretic seller would have to sell off, you know, 3% rate or 2.5% rate, et cetera. And then on the house that they buy, because most sellers, you know, sell a house and they buy a house, would be in a 65 to 7% range. That's a fairly uh, significant differential. It goes from a much lower monthly payment to a much higher monthly payment. So that is preventing some sellers that would be sellers right now from actually selling and just kind of sitting back and waiting out to see, hey, I can't do that right now. I can't afford it. So let's just wait and see. So that's causing a kind of even more restriction than what we have normally seen in the San Diego market. The San Diego market, again, we're laying ocean blocks. We don't have a lot of space. We don't have a lot of new construction happening in this market. So we've kind of have always been, or at least in the last five years, we've been always kind of in a state of low inventory. Well, now it's a little bit more extreme because of that interest rate differential. Now, one thing that's good that the Fed did say is that they expect the rates to stay up this year. And then the projections for next year is that they'll start lowering the Fed funds rate, which should, in theory, lower the mortgage interest rates, and maybe we'll see the rates come down into the 5% range, which I think if we get below 6%, we'll see more sellers come into market. We'll definitely see more buyers come into the market, and we'll definitely see more appreciation come back into the market. So hopefully that was helpful for you. If you're thinking about buying a home, I would love to chat with you about your particular situation. There is still some opportunity out there, but as I mentioned, competition is increasing, so you want to make sure that you are working with someone that knows how to navigate a more competitive space, and I've been doing that for many years, so I'm very good at it, so I would love to speak with you if that's something that you're concerned Considering. And if you're thinking about selling a home, like I mentioned, if you have a good reason to sell, you have a place to go, it's a good time to sell because there is more competition out there and there's fewer homes being sold. So we're seeing homes get more money now than what they were getting last year. So that's something you're thinking about. I would love to chat with you about your particular situation and how we can maximize the net on the sale of your home. Regardless, I love to talk real estate. I would love to chat with you more. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or I can do anything to be of service. Take care.